Hi, this is Dave Johnson with another edition of Math Off Topics. Today I want to derive the uh, Lagrange trigonometric identity for the cosine series. I used this result in a recent video in which I computed the definite integral of the cosine of x dx without assuming the antiderivative. In other words, we use the Riemann sum. And so this uh, result was very important to us. Let's go ahead and get into it. So um, at the top, I've written the identity. So you've got the sum of cosines. And this is a finite series, a finite sum. And we can, turns out we can write this in closed form. And what I want to do is show how to derive this expression. So we're going to start with the uh, cosine of theta written in terms of complex quantities. So this is based on the Euler identity. And you've probably seen this perhaps in a pre-calculus course. Certainly by the time you get to differential equations, you'll be pretty fluent with this. Um, so I'm not going to derive it. First thing I'm going to do is say, let's go ahead and replace the theta with uh, k theta. So cosine k theta is equal to e to the i k theta plus e to the negative i k theta divided by 2. And now we're going to sum both sides of this equation. So, so uh, and let me give myself a handle here, S, for the sum. So we're going to call this sum as K goes from 1 to N of cosine K theta. And summing both sides, I'm going to pull the 1 half out and go ahead and distribute the sum. So we get 1 half times the sum as k goes from 1 to n of e to the i k theta plus the sum as k goes from 1 to n of e to the negative i k theta. Now we can recognize both of these sums as a finite geometric series where the common ratio is either e to the i theta or e to the minus i theta. So let me go ahead and write r, the common ratio, is uh, either e to the i theta, or we could say also for the other one, r equals e to the negative i theta. And remembering that the summation as k goes from 1 to n of r to the k is equal to r times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. And I'm not going to derive that expression. It's very common uh, summation uh, for the geometric series. And something that you hopefully will see or have seen in your pre-calculus class. And certainly by the time you get to calculus two, this is something that you're going to see. So what I want to do now is replace these sums uh, by substituting in the R and using this expression. So, uh, so hopefully you can see this S equals one half times. Now the sum becomes R, which is E to the I theta times 1 minus, and then r to the n becomes e to the i n theta, and divide by 1 minus e to the i theta. And then plus, then we use the r equals e to the negative i theta, so we get e to the negative i theta times 1 minus r to the n, which is e to the negative i n theta, <clears throat> and all of that divide by 1 minus e to the negative i theta. And close parenthesis. Okay, 
<clears throat> excuse me. So now one thing, so part of the difficulty with this kind of proof is that in order to get there in the most convenient way possible, you want to avoid some algebra. And in this case, rather than multiplying these two expressions together and simplifying and so on, it's easier to recognize that if you multiply top and bottom of this one by e to the negative one half i theta, and that's going to make this e to the positive one half i theta, and <clears throat> multiply top and bottom of this one by e to the positive i theta, and that'll make this uh, e to the uh, i theta, one half i theta, then you end up with a common denominator. And so let's go ahead and do that. So one half e to the negative one half i theta times e to the i theta, we can't forget that, times 1 minus e to the i n theta, all divided by, so um, now if I multiply the bottom, let's go ahead and do that, so e to the negative 1 half i theta, uh, times 1 minus e to the i theta, okay? And then plus, over here, multiply top and bottom by uh, e to the positive 1 half i theta. So e to the 1 half i theta, uh, and then again times what is already there, e to the negative i theta, times 1 minus e to the negative i n theta, all divided by uh, e to the 1 half i theta times 1 minus e to the negative i theta. Close paren. Let's simplify. So 1 half, and then upstairs, I'm going to go ahead and, and multiply this out. And I think we can do that in one step. So we get e to the positive one half i theta minus, and then the e to the um, i n plus one half times theta. And downstairs, we're going to have e to the negative one-half i theta minus e to the positive one-half i theta. Plus, and then the next term would do the same thing. Now notice, let me just make this clearer. So if you multiply these two together and then multiply with this, you're going to add the exponents. And so you're going to get the e to the one-half i theta, and you got the e to the uh, i n theta and one half plus n is n plus one half and so that's how we and it's there's a plus sign in front even though there's a minus sign in front of this term so then the next term will do the same thing so we'll have e to the uh negative one half i theta minus now we've got a minus sign here and we're gonna we have a minus sign in the one half i theta from this product, so we end up with e to the negative i times n plus one half times theta, and that all divided by at the bottom we get e to the one half i theta minus e to the negative one-half i theta. Okay. Now, this isn't quite a common denominator, 
notice um, if if I multiply this by one half, or I'm sorry, by negative one, then this denominator will be the same as this denominator. In other words, this we could factor out a minus one here to get this. And so if I move that minus one upstairs, then we'll have a common denominator. So let me go ahead and do that. So we get one half, and then I'm gonna switch the order because I'm multiplying by negative one upstairs. So we get e to the i n plus one half theta minus e to the one half i theta uh, plus, I'm just going to go ahead and add these two terms together because now we're going to have a common denominator. So um, e to the negative one half i theta minus e to the negative i times n plus one half theta all divided by our common denominator which is again this so e to the one half i theta minus e to the negative one half i theta now some of you may start to see where this is headed but uh, basically the idea is, and, and one of the things I like to convey in, in these kinds of talks, these kinds of lectures, is that you don't wanna have these derivations memorized. In fact, I don't think anybody who is capable of doing this stuff memorizes these derivations. We know kind of where we're headed, we know uh, the process that we're using, and so, what we do is we we let the algebra lead us and so i can see what the next step is what is the next step well if we combine these two together and combine these two together then we we will eventually have two trig functions um, and it looks like they may be well it's hard to tell at this point but let's go ahead and keep going Okay, so equals one half, and I'm going to reorder these. I'm going to put these two together <clears throat> and change the order. So put, um, actually put a minus sign in front, and um, and then put these two together. And so let's go ahead and do that. So e to the i n plus one half theta minus e to the negative uh, i times n plus one half theta um, and then minus and let's go ahead and put that in parentheses and so this is going to be e to the one half i theta minus, uh, because I, I factored out a minus sign, so e to the negative one-half i theta, divide by our common denominator, e to the one-half i theta minus e to the negative one-half i theta. Okay, so and really, let's put these in parentheses here so we can group them together and think about them. Now, where are we headed? Well, this is going to have to be a sine of some sort, sine function. This is going to have to be a sine function because of the minus sign here. And likewise, this is going to be a sine. So if we divide top and bottom by 2i, so, in fact, let me go ahead and do that. In fact, uh, let me just shrink this down a little bit. I think I can fit this all in here. So I can do this. So, divide. Let's do this. So, divide the top by 2i and divide the bottom by 2i. Now, why am I doing that? 
Well, because we know that if we have a 2i in the denominator of those terms, then based on the Euler identity, we end up with sine functions. And so let me maybe write that a little bit more clearly. So one half times, and then the upstairs, we get e to the i n plus one half theta minus e to the minus i n plus one half theta divide by 2i minus and then e to the one half i theta minus e to the negative one half i theta and that is also divided by 2i okay and then the whole thing divided by e to the one half i theta minus e to the negative one half i theta divided by 2i. Now we recognize these as sine functions. So this becomes one half uh, sine of n plus one half times theta minus sine of um, one half theta divide by, and then the bottom is going to be sine one half theta. Now the way the final result is, we could divide <clears throat> this into each one of these. This cancels, uh, giving us the negative one. So let me rewrite this as one half times negative one plus, and then the sine of n plus one half times theta divided by sine one half theta. And if we go back to the beginning, that is exactly what the result says. I wrote a little meter up here, but um, I don't know if that helps to see kind of all this at once, but this is the result, and I hope that's been helpful. If so, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.